cherish the day finally returns after two years and a love story will make you almost wonder why wasn't this presented more towards Valentine's Day because the level of chemistry between the leads is just so good. So let's talk about the leads a little bit for the first topic. Sunday used to live in New Orleans with her mother and father, but in pursuit of a culinary career, she left, went to Atlanta, went to Clark University, and eventually she got her own restaurant and when it came to her father, she would come visit New Orleans, but her home base was family in Atlanta. Meanwhile, when it comes to Ellis, he never, re he technically, he never really left New Orleans. He did go semi-pro in basketball, but he didn't like it overseas. And when you add in the fact that he had a lot of injuries that he was trying to deal with, and that led to addiction to painkillers and alcoholism, and being a bit of a whore, things got rough for him, and eventually he bottomed out. And thanks to his now wife, well, soon to be ex-wife, Anastasia, he got his stuff together, went to trade school for plumbing, and also under his grandpa's tutelage, also learned the ropes. And now he has two kids, Everly and Bree, steady job with the company that he owns that mostly handles new construction but what's gonna really change his life is that after 25 years he's back in sunday's presence after he ruined things by cheating on her now for the second topic how did these two meet up again well being that sunday's father known as the judge mb bunch of other names he is starting to get to that point where his memory's slipping and he's starting to become worrisome beyond what Sunday's cousin uh, Lynette can handle or maybe has a time to handle. So Sunday is trying to bring her father to, to Atlanta so she can get a, keep a better eye on him. He doesn't want to leave because he knows the area well. His wife's cemetery is not too far away, so if he wants to visit her, he can. And that complicates things. But what's also complicating things is that Sunday would eventually like to sell the family home and the bathroom is all messed up because her dad potentially started a job but didn't finish it. But in Sunday's mind, she's able to handle it. So she goes to the store thinking that she can YouTube her way from fixing it. And that's where she runs into Ellis who's also getting supplies. The two share a moment because it's been 25 years. And you know, while things ended on a bad note, at the same time, there was much love there because they were each other's teenage sweethearts. But, you know, it becomes a bit of a cute high bye moment until Sunday is trying to fix things and realize she is way beyond her depth and a YouTube video is not going to show her what she needs to do unless she wants to make problems worse. So Ellis comes over, handles the issue, well, at least the best part of the issue, and when he's talking about you know, not taking payment for it, Sunday decides she's not gonna do that to no black owned business. And since he refuses to let her pay outright for his labor and parts, she instead takes him on what isn't called a date, but she does take him on the snow cones, which kind of becomes a date. And with that, both sides are kind of reminded of what they were and also why they had to take that long break from each other. Now, in terms of what they were, they have good chemistry, they're cute together in terms of looks, and even when a gentleman named Brother Fingers comes up on them, you know, he recognizes her, he recognizes Ellis, and he reminds Sunday why she had to take time away from Ellis. But once she gets called Ellis's girl, she's reminded how much her identity was attached to, you know, dating Ellis, since he was this big time basketball player, had all these groupies, and there she was, cute as can be but you know not as high profile as him hence why when she went to college and he tried to visit her she dodged him because after spending a good part of her teen years as someone as the extension of someone's identity she needed an out and going to college was that out and potentially why she never decided to look back when it comes to going back to new orleans maybe open up her culinary shop there but as for the details of why she decided to stay in Atlanta, why she decided to open up her restaurant there, future episodes may provide, but right now the point of the matter is, Ellis cheated 
and with that, that was all Sunday needed to kind of wake up from the kind of trajectory they were on and really take a hold of her life and figure out what she wanted outside of what she could have with Ellis. Which leads to the last topic of just trying to figure out what could be in the future. Now, when it comes to Sunday, it's not clear what her relationship status is because some guy who definitely seems close to her drops her off at the airport before she heads over to New Orleans. As for Ellis, as noted, him and Anastasia, his wife, they're at an end because Karma whooped his ass and Anastasia cheated on him with her road manager when she was singing during like a, middle, a little mini tour. Now, whether Bree knows about this, their youngest, who's maybe like elementary school age, or Evelyn, who's maybe like late middle school, high school age, it's not clear. All that is known is that those two, being Ellis and Anastasia, are co-parenting to the best of their abilities, and they seem cordial with one another. Now, that helps Sunday know where he's at. Ellis isn't really sure where Sunday's at, even though she says she's just dating. She's not like official with somebody in a, you know, boyfriend girlfriend capacity. But what may make it so that Ellis can secure her love again is that MV disappears at the night. He goes to see his wife's um, plot at the cemetery and he apparently gets lost. Rather than Ellis just kind of letting that be something that's her problem, instead he comes along, helps her look, and then when Envy's giving Sunday attitude because he doesn't want to go anywhere with her because she's trying to change his life by force, Ellis is able to talk to him and help him calm down and also remind him that he is much more than what Sunday kind of pushes on him in terms of, you know, being someone who needs to be taken care of. Ellis reminds him of when he called him the judge and he talked to him and kind of got his life together. And with him doing that, Envy gets back some of his dignity in terms of what his current situation is. And also, he, Ellis is able to help Sunday get the current goal, which is getting her dad back to the house. And because he's able to do that, and able to do that in a way that allows her father not only grace, but his sense of dignity to remain, in, remain intact, the fire starts to go and she's starting to fall in love all over again. The first highlight for us is just, it's what we're given is such a swoon worthy love story. And not only that, when it comes to Cherish Today, it's an anthology series. We're gonna get a new cast every single season. And unlike a lot of shows, in my opinion, this one isn't asking of you to give it time so that it could eventually warm up and get good. Off the bat, Joy Bryant and Henry Simmons with the way they look each other and just the way they vibe off one another is the type of thing that makes you want to instantly get attached. It's a type of chemistry that you don't really get a lot of, especially as most casting people seem to mainly be focused on are both of the leads attractive, not can both of the leads, you know, play off each other well and present a realistic relationship. And heck, just watching those two is probably the main reason I'm even doing video reviews for this, even though video reviews are so time consuming. That aside, the second highlight is that when it comes to Ellis, his foundation is laid out well. And then when it comes to Sunday, we're giving a lot of room to ask questions that, at least based off of the first season, it's gonna be so interesting to see how things develop. With Ellis, they go into his drug addiction, his alcoholism, womanizing, him being unable to go pro because of injuries, and then just kind of switching up and following his grandfather's lead and getting to trade school, becoming a plumber. And then, of course, there's his relationship with Anastasia, his kids. There's a lot going on with him to unpack. And what we've getting in is just been a little bit of taste of everything. So to see how his relationship with Everly really is outside of a little taste of her showing that she kind of feels awkward about liking me. I think it's t To Kill a Mockingbird and how he kind of reassures her. Then trying to see how he got to this good place with Anastasia after she cheated on him. Again, there's just a lot to go 
true when it comes to him. And then when it comes to Sunday, I fully understand that part of the reason for staying in Atlanta was to kind of escape being Ellis's girl since Brother Fingers, 25 years later, is still identifying her as that. But there is a need to wonder if there's more to it. Her mom died approximately 30 years ago. She left 25 years ago. So there is a question of what is her relationship with her father? Is it something like we see now where she truly loves him and it's very simple? Or did it take time and effort to get to that place? Because if he was a judge like how Ellis makes it seem, there's a good chance he was very hard on her in a way that maybe wasn't the most loving, but probably the most protective, if not the way that he knew how to love his daughter at the time. And with him having memory loss, or else early on said memory loss, so comes maybe her last chance to confront some of the things he said and done, and us figuring out how that played into her decision to not only go to Atlanta for school, but also stay there for work and also build a life out there. And just all these potential storylines and the precedent set by the first season, how it developed things, makes you want to invest in what's going on right off the bat, rather than having to wait to episode three, episode five, or even halfway through the season to finally get a sense that, oh, I have made a good investment and I haven't wasted my time thus far. With that said, it's not just the lead characters that are interesting, but I would also say the supporting characters. Brother Fingers, who we mentioned a few times, was a drum major in school. And this need to question, how did he go from a drum major, which I would think at an HBCU was a good way to get a scholarship. Well, going from high school to HBCU, that is, to get a scholarship, to now appearing homeless. With him talking about he can play 68 different instruments, clearly the gentleman is talented. So what happened in his life that led to him, you know, coming off, coming up? bummy nice but bummy and in a state in his life where it's like there's no real stability and on top of that there's a need to question of like we've gone into when it came to sunday what is mb's like what is he like outside of being sunday's father when it comes to lynette who's i want to say sunday's cousin what is her life what is how does she feel about kind of being tasked with looking after her uncle how does she feel about Sunday? And is it just the case of that's family, so she's doing what she can? Or is there something else involved? Like, did Envy possibly kind of help raise her? Maybe help her out when her parents weren't able to? You know, when it comes to Cherish the Daily's going off of the first season, there are some elements that you can recognize that are definitely, you know, grew up in an urban black area not with the best economic status but at the same time it's not trying to be trauma porn so what Lynette could have gone through is anybody's guess and then you can throw an Anastasia in there try to figure out why she cheated on Ellis was it because you know with him supporting her for a good portion or rather what was it what was the way Ellis put it she supported his dreams while he got his plumbing license. And then they switched it so that he would kind of support her dreams on to become a singer. Could it be that once she kind of was able to tap into who she is, she kind of fell out of love with him? You know, there's a lot that could also be unpacked with her. And considering that, at least in my understanding of her career, we haven't really seen Terry J. Bond get to play a character who wasn't you know, on a comedic tip. It should be interesting to see how she plays out a character in a drama that not only has a budget, but it is also on a major network. Which leads to the only on defense topic, and that for me is just, when it comes to older characters, especially older black characters, a part of me always gets a bit uneasy when half the time when we see them, they're either sickly or else their life is basically fulfilled by taking care of someone else's kids. When it comes to Richard Roundtree as Envy, I I, wanted, I wish we got to see him as someone who was thriving, finding ways to keep himself busy, even if he was like a local hoe. And <laughs> not someone who was bridled by memory loss. Because 
as we've seen, Richard Roundtree can still deliver a scene, even if it's something like an action scene as he did in that last Shaft movie, but I don't know. I think after the last season with Cicely Tyson's character, I just want to see a character who is just vibrant, kicking ass, and really giving the legends a chance to really showcase why they're legends beyond because they've been in the industry so long. Overall, Cherish the Day starts with a new stunning cast that will likely pick up where the last one left off and further cement own as one of the best places for black creatives, whether you're in front of the camera or behind the camera, to showcase your art and really allow yourself to be part of something that has a budget, some kind of marketing, and can really showcase why you've chosen this field.